Supper tonight. Well, you got a whole creel full. Yeah, but with Steve and Betty Joe living at the hotel, it takes a bigger mess. Why don't you drop in the ones you got? Those are for my supper. Yeah, but I promised them back at the hotel. I... Okay, okay. Take them. Take them. <laughs> if you want to come over some evening, I'll give you some lessons in casting. Then we'll go into the technique of hooking a fish. See, a fish has a very sensitive mouth. Yeah, I'm glad something has a very sensitive mouth. <laughs> Howdy. Hi. Hi. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen, but could I see your catch, please? Oh, gladly. Oh. Get a load of them beauties. Oh, that's a nice catch. Very nice. Hell, yeah, no talent here got skunked. <laughs> Three, six, nine, eleven. Uh, mister, you're over the limit. What? Well, the limit is 10 trout, and you've got 11. Oh, I can explain that. My friend here gave me his two, didn't you, Sam? My name's Sam. Remember me? I got skunked. Come on, Sam. Tell him. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what happened. I gave him my two fish. You heard what he said? Yeah, yes, I heard. And stop writing. No, it's still a violation. The law specifically states the number of fish you have in your possession. I never heard of such a stupid law. Uh, section B, paragraph four. What's this going to cost me? Fifty dollars or six months in jail. Or both. I didn't ask you. <laughs> well, I, I was just trying to be helpful. <laughs> yeah, a lot of help you are. Well, good day, gentlemen. It was very nice to meet... So long. <laughs> Joe, you didn't thank me for the extra fish I gave you. Are you waiting for the train? Mm-hmm. Me too. Do you, do you think the old 305 will be on time? It does say 305, doesn't it? Is, isn't that the schedule? Uh-huh. At least that's what it was on uh, June 12, 1958. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they haven't changed it since then? I don't think anybody's even noticed it since then. <laughs> the cannonball just kind of comes when it's ready. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm new in the area. May I sit down? Are you a sheriff or something? Oh, no, no, no. no. Department of uh, Fish and Game. We face danger, though. Oh, I'm sure you do. Say, uh, would you like me to tell you about a couple of rough customers I faced just this morning? What are? Well, see the one guy? Not short. <laughs> What's you got there, Joe? 
Oh, just a note to my congressman. What kind of a note? A blistering one, I'll bet. Oh, no. Just a constructive suggestion. About what? <laughs> Aren't you a little worried about being sued for slander? What? Dear Congressman, I think you should know we have a game warden in this district who is contemptible, underhanded, rotten, crooked, unscrupulous, two-faced, double-dealing, filthy, evil-minded, sinful, and corrupt. You kind of get the feeling that he doesn't like this guy. Should I make a wild guess that he gave you a ticket which naturally you didn't deserve? You're darn right I didn't. Why, that low-down sneaking Joe, scene. we get the idea. I didn't even know we had a game warden here. Who is he, somebody new? Yeah, some little mealy-moused weasel by the name of... Hi, everybody. I want you to meet my new friend, Orrin Pike. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Dr. Craig? Uh, nice to meet you. Um... How do you do? And this is my brother-in-law, Steve Elliott. Nice to meet you. And my Uncle Joe. Nice to meet well, you. Well, you're mad. <laughs> that, that, that was business. I mean, uh, I always like to keep my business life and my social life separate. Don't you? No. <laughs> uh, Joe, I'll need your help. Oh, we'll go out and see if it's there. Oh, well, that's a good idea. See it once where? Uh, that's it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Here when I get back. I guess I'll be going. No, wait. You gave my Uncle Joe a ticket? Mm -hmm. He was one of the rough customers? Mm -hmm. Oh, he couldn't have been a rough customer. Well, he is now. He doesn't stay in his moods for very long. He'll change back to his own sweet self. I say, you dirty devil dealing, stinking little underhanded rat. <laughs> Listen, while he's changing into his own sweet self, I think I'll keep my distance. <laughs> don't you understand? He was only trying to do his job. Then why don't he go out and catch criminals? The other cops catch the Boston Strangler. He snagged the fella for having one extra face. <laughs> but that's what he's hired to do, Joe. Yeah. Besides, you're not helping things this way. What do you want me to do, invite him into our home? Say, oh, no hard feelings, old chap. Come on, be one of the family. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Why not extend him a friendly hand? Invite him in to enjoy the true shady rest, spirit of friendship and camaraderie. <laughs> now, you know, you two are right. Why should I treat a fellow man with anger? I'll turn the other cheek. <laughs> and maybe he'll turn his. <laughs> How do you like your hamburger, Warren? Oh, a uh, medium well, sir. Medium well, she is. Is this lemonade sweet enough for you, Warren? Oh. Uh, perhaps, perhaps just a touch more. Sure. <laughs> oh, you, you, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Joe. Uncle Joe. Mort, <laughs> this is the greatest time I ever had. Swell. I don't know how I'm going to thank you, people. How was that? <laughs> I said I don't know how I'm going to thank you. <laughs> well, think nothing of it. Oh, say, there is one little thing you could do. Well, what is it? Tear this up. Oh, no, that's yours. You're going to need it. See, that's a duplicate. <laughs> is your source of charges and everything? Boy, it sure is a good thing that I know how nice you all are. Otherwise, I think you were trying to bribe me. <laughs> you got to be bribing, bribing a government officer. That's bad. According to the, the rules... Oh, it's your hamburger! <laughs> <laughs> What a 
fight this thing in court? Certainly. It all boils down to my word against theirs, and I can get the whole community to vouch for my character. Oh, well, if you can do that. And Sam, I'm going to do you the honor of being my first witness. Well, hold on. What have I got to do? All you got to say is that I'm a solid citizen, truthful and honest. That's what I got to do, huh? That's all. <laughs> What if I tell him about your other virtues? Like you always clean everything on your plate and you're very good at taking naps. No, son. Just truthful and honest. That's all you gotta say. Could you settle for neat and clean? Ah, <laughs> oh, forget about it. I've got my own character witnesses. Well, now let's finish the game. The game's over. It ain't even worth cheating. <laughs> Steve, you know, I like you. Oh, well, I like you. I like you a lot. I like you a lot. You mean it? Of course. Good, then I'm glad I chose you to be the one. The one what? My character witness. When? When the trial comes up. What do I have to say? Oh, just tell them I'm trustworthy, absolutely honest, man of high principle, and junk like that. Uh-huh. Junk like that. Well, you don't need to make a big thing out of it and go on and on and on. Oh, good. I think I can hold back. <laughs> you know what? I think it'd be great if you'd wear your Air Force uniform with a good conduct medal on it. You did get one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, well, I wangled one out of them. Hey, as a clincher, I'll wear my World War I outfit. Yeah. With your good conduct medal. Oh, uh, well, there's no use in looking too gaudy, you know. <laughs> you mean to tell me you didn't even get a good conduct medal? Oh, it was just a personal thing between Pershing and me. <laughs> I can't count on you, can I? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know, Joe. Yeah, I'm standing up in court and taking an oath and all, and, uh, uh besides, I'm going to be busy that day. What day? Wednesday. It's Thursday. <laughs> it's a two-day job. <laughs> So, Steve, sometimes I get the feeling that you're... Oh, hi, Doc. Hello, Joe. Hi, Steve. Hi, Doc. You're just the person I want to see. Oh. Could I talk to you for a minute? Of course, Joe. Won't you step into my office? Yeah, don't worry, Steve. I'll use you next time. Oh, <laughs> uh, Doc, I uh, feel I should warn you. What he wants to ask you... I know what he wants to ask me. Sam Drucker tipped me off. <laughs> Won't you please sit down, Joe? Thanks. Doc, how long have you known me? Oh, two years at least. Well, in that two years, uh, have you got to know me pretty well? Indeed I have. Then, uh, what would be your overall appraisal of me? You really want to know? Yeah, give it to me straight, Doc. Well, your heartbeat is about normal, and your blood pressure is pretty good. The diastolic is a little high, uh, so I have a suggestion. But, uh, now, Joe, you asked me to tell you, and I'm going to. Now, when I examined you a month ago, you wouldn't listen to me, so that's why I'm so pleased that you've come in here now. But look, well, I realize it might be a little unpleasant for you, but it'll be worthwhile. The problem isn't so serious that it can't be corrected by diet and more exercise. No. Come in. Oh, excuse me, Janet, but I was wondering if you had the prescription ready for the baby. Oh, yes, I do. I have it right here. Can you sit down a while, dear? I'll, I'll write out the directions. Sure, I have plenty of time. Now, is there anything else you want to ask me, Joe? Oh, uh, no. Thank you very much for coming in. And I do recommend a diet. Here, this will help you. It's a list of all the favorable foods, and you'll see that fish comes highly recommended. <laughs> Uh-oh. I forgot. That's not exactly the magic word. <laughs> Have you seen Uncle Joe? Oh, he went over to the church to see Reverend Barton. But that was hours ago trying to get the Reverend to vouch for him. He had a hunch he was up to something. He left with that hymn book he's had here for the past year. I feel so sorry for him. You haven't been able to convince Oren to change his mind? No, and don't think I haven't worked on him. Well, how about sending in the first team? Oh, no, you don't. You stay out of it. Oh, 
Oh, it'll only be for the good of the cause. And the cause is you moving in and trying to take him away from me. <laughs> Bobby Joe, don't you trust me? I'm your sister. As my sister, I trust you, but not as a woman. Well, why not as a woman? Because I happen to be one of those two. <laughs> you and your reason. <laughs> Well, here comes Uncle Jonas. What happened to you? Oh, this? That's paid. I don't get it. We thought you went over to the church to see Reverend Barton about vouching for you in court. I did, but before I could get a word in edgeways, he reminded me that six months ago I had promised I'd paint the rectory. Oh. So we didn't think you were trustworthy and reliable, huh? <laughs> don't worry, Uncle Joe. We'll go into court and tell him all about your character, your loyalty. Your truthfulness. Your honesty. Why, there must be a million things we could make up about you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When you go into court, you have to swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Right, Uncle Joe? Well, uh, sort of. <laughs> and when you swear to tell the truth, you have to put your hand on the Bible. You have to put your hand on the Bible? Mm -hmm. You have to. Boy, the things they won't do to cross you up nowadays. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll just have to face him alone tomorrow. Oh, well, don't worry, Uncle Joe. You might still win the case. And if you don't, six months go by in a hurry. <laughs> when he has to appear in court. Oh, that's right. Today's the day. And I'm afraid it's going to be a very bleak one for one Uncle Joe. Not necessarily. What? Well, Orrin could be detained and not get there in time, and Uncle Joe could win by default. Bobby Joe, how could you ever think of such a thing? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Medico Junction Land. Oren, could you show me how to cast? Bobby Joe, I showed you four times. I keep forgetting. <laughs> okay. You see, you hold the hole like this. Are you paying attention? No. Well, golly, if you don't want to learn. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> okay, then you bring the pole back like this. And, okay. You're cute. <laughs> so you got to keep your finger there so you can control the line. Keep your finger on the reel, like that. Okay? You're cute. And you bring the pole forward, like I am. Thank you. You know, you're the first person that ever said that to me. Of course, I did have an aunt once, but uh, I guess they don't count. No. They don't count. You sure this isn't just my uniform? No, oh, I'm sure. Very sure. courtroom in order. I hope you got something better than a meat cleaver for a gavel this time. Oh, yeah, I saw to that. Last time you got through pounding for order in the court, I ended up with a sliced counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes the party of the first part. Uh, Judge, you know Joe Carson? Sure he does. No, I don't. <laughs> Remember the lodge meeting? When I was chairman of the entertainment and I had you over to address the brothers? Oh, is that you? Right. I'm the one that saw to it you got a free meal. Oh, yes. How could I forget? I've had indigestion ever since. <laughs> hey, another one. Me, too. Oh, boy. Hey, you're catching on. That's the third one you caught. Oh, it's a nice one. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet I could catch a whole mess of them by evening. Yeah, I bet you could have that. Evening. My gosh, I completely forgot about the time. Who could possibly care about the time? Oh, no, it's 9.40 and I'm supposed to be in court by 10 sharp. Oh, you're a couple of hours late. What's the difference? Bobby Joe, this is official business. Now, we got to get this stuff put away and roll back in. You say so. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm hurrying. <laughs> Bobby Joe! Golly, well, I'm the only. Here, I'll find you now. Boy, I'm going to be late for sure. Get out of there, you dumb old scare. Bobby Joe, that's the Judge, this is getting ridiculous. It's 25 minutes after 10. I agree, Carson. If he doesn't show up in five minutes, I'll dismiss the case. Thanks. Hey, Sam, get out the checkers and let's have a victory celebration game. <laughs> Sorry for being late. That's all right, my boy. Knowing you the way I do, I'm sure you had a valid excuse. How are the folks? Oh, just fine. How's your family? Fine, thank you. Boy, is this thing rigged. <laughs> How's the fishing? Oh, just great. I caught ten nice ones. A uh, thirteen. No, 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 Bobby. Ten. That's the limit. No, no, Bobby. Joe, not on the... <laughs> Mr. Trout. Hi, George. There are 13. No, no, no. There can't be. I put mine in with yours. Oh, well, see, that, that explains it, Judge. You see, she, she put her three in with mine. See, three and ten is 13. In other words, you're pleading guilty. No, 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 no. You know the law, the fish are in your possession. Yeah, but, I mean... Why, um... That's the same thing that happened to you, isn't it, Uncle Joe? Same thing. Bobby Joe, I'll bet you did this deliberately. Yep, I bet I did. Good girl. <laughs> now, what are you going to do about this double crime, Judge? Well, now, it seems to me there's been a couple of violations here. On the other hand, I don't think there was any wrongdoing intended. Oh, no. Absolutely not. But just to be sure, the next time, Mr. Carson, I find you five dollars. What? To be donated to the Wildlife Conservation Program. Oh. Well, that's different. And you, Deputy Pike, I order you to donate five dollars to the Wildlife Conservation Program. Yes, sir. <laughs> sure. Girl. You're not mad? Oh, you only hurt yourself. I was going to spend that five dollars taking you to the movies tonight. Well, we don't have to go to any place that costs money. No? Well, we could go on a boat ride on the lake this evening without the fishing tackle. We could, we could even go on a canoe. That's romantic. Hit the bait. It's a uniform. <laughs> Thanks, Judge. Have a cigar. <laughs> TV Land, did you know fact number 49? Did you know that the erudite, award-winning newsman, Peter Jennings, was a high school dropout? It's true. The more you know about television, the more you'll enjoy TV Land.